friends, uh, in this video, we are going to have some idea about boundary layer. What boundary layer is, how it is formed and what are the salient features of boundary layer. And uh, basically this video is going to help us from the point of view of gate examination. Okay. So see what happens is that whenever a fluid flows past the solid surface, for example, a vehicle is moving in air, right? So that air has a relative velocity in the backward direction with respect to the solid surface of the, uh, uh, of the vehicle, right? So whenever a fluid flows past a surface, some kind of phenomena occurs at the interaction of the fluid and the solid surface. So obviously that phenomena is known as boundary layer phenomena. But that phenomena is very important to understand the flow, to analyze the flow as well as to analyze the heat transfer between the solid surface and the fluid stream which is obviously going to occur in form of convection. So this uh, boundary layer phenomena is not only important from the point of view of fluid mechanics but also from the point of view of convection in the subject of heat transfer okay so in order to understand what boundary layer is what i have done is i have drawn two figures one on the left and the other on the right so what the uh, figure on left says is that let us suppose there is some kind of stationary plate okay and uh, the leading edge of the stationary plate has been marked as origin the x-axis of the coordinate system is along the stationary plate while the y-axis is perpendicular to the plate, right? So what will x uh, signify? So x will signify the distance of a flow section from the leading edge of the plate while y will signify the distance from the plate in the direction perpendicular to the plate. Now in the blue, some fluid stream has been shown. So this fluid stream, I am assuming that this fluid stream was initially flowing parallel to the plate with a uniform velocity of u naught. So you can take any point within the fluid stream, all the points are going to show same velocity u naught. Now what we do want to do is, what the question is that what happens to the fluid stream once it reaches uh, the flat plate. So basically what we want to do is, we want to plot the velocity profile that is velocity u as a function of x and y when the fluid reaches when the fluid flows over the flat plate so that velocity profile has been shown in this diagram so i have drawn two sections one is section one and the other section two so this is the velocity profile corresponding to section a so if you will measure the velocity along the x direction at different points at the section you will get a graph like this okay so you can see that in the layers of the fluid which are near to the stationary plate the velocity is less the velocity is very low and at y equal to zero the velocity is zero this is because of no slip condition and as the value of y increases the distance from the stationary plate increases the velocity value also increases now at a certain point A, the velocity that is u as a function of x and y becomes almost equal to free stream velocity which is u0. So that point I have marked as A and its distance I have taken as delta 1. Okay? Similarly for section 2, in the layers of fluid near the solid surface, the velocity is almost 0 because of no slip condition and when we move far away from the plate, the value of velocity increases. So at certain distance delta 2, that is at point B, u as a function of x and y becomes almost equal to u0. Okay? So what you can do is, you can, what you can do is, you can take different sections. Uh, you can divide this whole plate into very large number of sections and for each section you can draw a velocity profile like this. So for each section we will get some value of delta, right? If y is less than delta, the velocity is changing its value from 0 to u0. That is there is some kind of velocity gradient. But if y is greater than delta, this means that all the points have velocity u0. Therefore there is no velocity gradient outside the value of delta, okay? So basically, when we will join all these po points A, B, C, D and E, we will get which is something known as boundary layer. So let us have a look at what is this boundary layer. So once we will join all the points A, B, C, D, E etc. for all these sections on which the velocity profile has been analyzed, we will get a profile like this denoted by a red line. 
So what does this red line signify? See when we have taken a section at x and we plotted its velocity profile that is u as a function of x comma y, we saw that up to a particular value of delta, the velocity was increasing from 0 to u0 and beyond that it was constant which was equal to u0. Okay. So there are two variations. One is that when y is less than equal to delta x, del u by del y is not equal to 0. Velocity is changing its value with y. Therefore, there is some velocity gradient. There is some val finite value of del u by del y and the u as a function of y lies between u0 and 0, right? So, 0 is the value at uh, 0 is the value at the solid plate, okay? But when y is greater than delta x, del u by del y is equal to 0 and the velocity is equal to free stream velocity which is u0, right? So, this area of y less than equal to delta x is known as boundary layer whereas the region beyond it, this region is known as the bulk stream. Okay, so what we can say is what is that what the definition of boundary layer is that whenever a fluid flows past a solid surface, a region is developed near the surface within which the velocity gradient in direction perpendicular to flow is not equal to zero, right? So since the velocity gradient is not equal to zero and if you remember from Newton's law of viscosity, the shear stresses are directly proportional to velocity gradient, the shear stresses are also significant, right? So this region of non-zero velocity gradient and significant shear stresses is known as boundary layer, okay? So this is what is the definition of boundary layer. But how is this boundary layer formed? See, what happens is, let us assume that this fluid mass is moving in form of layers. So when this fluid mass will reach the plate, the layer of the fluid in the immediate vicinity of the plate will come to rest because of no slip condition. And as soon as this layer comes to rest, between this layer and the layers above it, a velocity gradient will develop. So whenever there is a velocity gradient because of the viscosity uh, within the fluid, then because of the viscosity of fluid, some viscous stresses are developed. Now those viscous st stresses represent dissipation of mechanical energy, dissipation of kinetic energy. So what the, those viscous stress will do is they will slow down the upper layers also, right? So there, so what we can see is that in these layers, the velocity is less than u naught because these have been slowed down, right? Now, as we move ahead, as the value of x increases, more and more layers will be slowed down. Now, uh, that's why more and more layers will be slowed down. That's why what we can see is at different sections, the value of delta is different. That is, as x is increasing, the value of delta is also increasing, right? So, viscosity, so basically viscosity and no slip condition is the main reason behind the formation of the boundary layer. And the thickness of boundary layer, which is delta, is dependent upon the kinematic viscosity of the fluid. So, dynamic viscosity is responsible for phenomena and the kinematic viscosity decides the value of delta. Okay. So, this is... Uh, this is the basic idea of boundary layer and its formation. Now let us have a look that what are its important features. So two important features are now already known to us. One is y is less than uh, one is within the boundary layer velocity gradient is finite. Therefore, shear stresses are significant. Now, since the velocity gradient is finite, what happens is inside the boundary layer the flow is rotational, right? But outside the boundary layer, there are no velocity gradients, the uh, uh, velocity is constant, then there are no shear stresses, moreover, the flow is also rotational. So you can define boundary layer as the zone of rotational flow and the bulk stream as the zone of rotational flow, okay? Further, it has been seen that up to a certain distance from the leading edge, Within the boundary layer, the flow is laminar, that is fluid is moving inside the boundary layer in form of layers. But as the value of x, x increases a critical value, the laminar characteristics are lost and the flow gets completely com 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 uh, converted into turbulent flow. So, uh, in order to, if you remember, in order to determine the regime, that is the nature of the flow, whether it is laminar or turbulent, we can use the Reynolds number. And particularly for flow over flat plates, the Reynolds number can be given as, this you can write down as the third salient feature. The Reynolds number can be given as RE at section X. Reynolds number for section at X is equal to 
a row that is the density into free string velocity into the distance of the section from the leading edge divided by dynamic viscosity of the fluid. Okay, so when the value of Reynolds number is less than 3 into 10 raised to power 5 for this particular case the flow is laminar and when this value is greater than 5 into 10 raised to power 5 the flow is turbulent. So this is the next feature of uh, next important feature of boundary layer. Okay, we also saw we also saw that as the value of x increases, the corresponding distance from the plate where the velocity becomes almost equal to uh, the free string velocity increases. That is, with increase in x, the value of delta also increases, right? And mathematically, if we can define, mathematically we can define delta as that value of y. Mathematically, we can define delta as that value of y where the velocity is almost equal to free stream velocity, right? So these are some important features. In the next video, we will have a look that what are the important physical quantities related to boundary layer and how to calculate those quantities. Thank you.